This is uh, introduction to nuclear spectroscopy. It is uh, very, uh, very wide field. Yeah, that's that's clear. That means in any case, it is some uh, view on this problem. That means it is not a uh, complete description. Uh, that means uh, it's possible uh, some another problems to see, for example, in this literature will be which will be already uh, given here, and also there are uh, more textbooks which is possible to uh, to find on the internet on or uh, in the uh, in the libraries. Uh, I have some of these uh, uh, books in uh, in electronic version, some copies which I already made in the sand. But uh, it, and uh, if you will want, yeah, uh, say me, and I will send. But it will be only for you, yeah, because it is uh, it is not for uh, public present presentation or uh, public transferring yeah this is this is a copy of uh, and it is possible to see from which library it is uh, okay fine uh, that means uh, this our uh, spectroscopy or spectrometry uh, lecture will be about all fields of this yeah and uh, we will start with some introduction which we i already started and uh, also uh, second part uh, will be or some first part of our lecture uh, will be some historical overview yeah uh, because it's fine to look how was history of uh, of uh, this science field and uh, and uh, how it is uh, development and uh, to look on 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 it uh, after that, we will start with this uh, gamma spectroscopy, uh, and uh, I think that it is the uh, the, the most important part of uh, our lecture. Yeah, and uh, any field, gamma, electrons, uh, heavy particle, neutron spectrometry, and neutrino spectrometry, it will be uh, in this in this uh, this schedule of this will be in. Uh, any times uh, similar, yeah. That means first uh, we will discuss, and we will also, I think, for you will be uh, repetition of uh, how uh, is interaction of uh, these uh, particles of this rays uh, with matter. After that, we will discuss these uh, detectors. After that, uh, we will discuss uh, how looks like spectrum or. Uh, it's possible also to make interaction spectrum and after the detectors. Uh, and uh, if we have uh, detectors, there are uh, different types of detectors and it's possible also to make some combination of detectors because uh, maybe you know that uh, for uh, some uh, big experiments, for example, these high energy experiments which are already uh, at CERN or at GSI Darmstadt, uh, there are setups of many detectors. Yeah? That means also uh, for this gamma spectrometry, it's uh, sometimes necessary to do some uh, more complicated and more complex setup of uh, detectors. And we will discuss this. Uh, after that, uh, will be something about detection and spectrometry of high energy gamma rays. Yeah? And after that, will be some application of gamma spectrometry. Uh, it's necessary to say that uh, this uh, possible uh, possibilities of applications are very wide field. Yeah? That means there are many, many applications. That means uh, it will be also only some subjective uh, view on it, and it will be only a few examples yeah, for uh, Next part will be about spectrometry of electrons and positrons. That means they are light charge particles. Yeah. That means again it will be about interaction. After that will be detectors and spectrometers. How is possible to measure energy? Uh, how it looks like this beta spectrum and how it is possible to work with it. And uh, after that will be some beta spectrometry application and again some high energy 
uh, spectrometry of these uh, electrodes, which are uh, maybe you know that it is very similar uh, detection of uh, of gamma and uh, this light uh, charged particles, electrons. In any case, uh, for high energy, you will obtain this electromagnetic shower, and it's possible uh, to use this detection of electromagnetic shower. Uh, after that will be a uh, part which is connected with uh, spectrometry of uh, heavy particles, ions, uh, and again interaction. And it is necessary to say that uh, we will, uh, in this, uh, this is similar because in for a uh, charged particle you have ionization. And uh, that means that again we will discuss ionization and uh, we will uh, discuss only specifying and specify parts of uh, of this, uh, which are different from from this light uh, particles and uh, heavy particles. Uh, after that, about detectors and spectrometers, and again some examples uh, of uh, usage of this uh, spectrometry uh, for uh, study of uh, fundamental science in this region for. Uh, nuclear and elementary particle uh, physics and also for some application uh, which are for another uh, type of scientific fields or also for industry. Uh, this uh, next part will be about spectrometry of uh, neutral particles, that means neutrons, and on the end will be uh, some uh, some uh, short lecture about neutrino uh, spectrometry. Uh, okay, that's I said to you that uh, it's possible to to look on some literature. As I I don't know what is possible to do uh, to to obtain for you, uh, and uh, if you have some uh, possibility to take something from library, uh, some of this they are on possible to obtain on the net internet. Uh, but um, but uh, not all, and some, if you will want, I, I will send to you because I, I have. That means uh, we have some very old, but uh, very, very nice uh, book. This is the Zigban, uh, which is also from some historical point of view, but uh, not only because there are a very nice description of uh, ionization and how it is working and uh, OK, it's possible to use. Uh, older uh, older book is uh, also uh, nuclear spectroscopy from uh, this uh, Phi Eisenberg self. And uh, okay, uh, this is one thing. Maybe I, I this I will send you because this is uh, uh, work of uh, my uh, older colleague uh, from Institute, which is exactly handbook of this gamma spectroscopy for application for. Uh, neutron activation analysis. Uh, this Helmer and Ebertin, it's uh, this gamma and X-ray spectrometry uh, with semiconductor detectors. This is special uh, on uh, on the semiconductor detectors. And uh, also what are, uh, maybe this book you know already because this is well known uh, booklet for uh, radiation detection and measurements. This Knoll, this is for our students. It is one of the uh, the most used, <laughs> uh, most most used uh, booklet textbook. Uh, this uh, Arian and Voigt. Uh, this is uh, some exactly. This is this application for nuclear uh, physics and study of nuclear structure. Uh, this Leo. This is also uh, one very uh, very known and uh, very used uh, textbooks for uh, for this uh, particle detection and uh, these techniques which are used in nuclear and particle physics. This Leo and uh, Greiner Ponero. It's also nice nice booklet and Dan Green. It's uh, also this uh, particle detectors physics and these things. Uh, uh, okay, it's necessary to say. Uh, these books are uh, sometimes uh, very spe specialized and or they are very wide. That means in any case, I need for you or from you only this part which I will uh, be lectured. 
But that's clear that PowerPoint and also lecture is not the same as textbooks. And uh, in from these textbooks, it will be fine if you will take uh, these uh, parts which I will lecture only this on exam will be only these things which I will these fields and these subjects which I will uh, present during uh, this lecture. Yeah, uh, that is not necessary uh, to read <laughs> all these textbooks and, and these things. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. And uh, OK, as I said, we will start with uh, history overview of uh, nuclear spectroscopy and spectrometry. And uh, OK, as it is also this historical overview is this uh, subjective and uh, it is uh, my a little my personal view how it's possible uh, to to set some epochs of this. And uh, that means that uh, it's not <laughs> uh, not necessary really to take uh, also the same view on it. But uh, okay, in any case, it will be some overview which will be maybe fine for you to see uh, from uh, some uh, some top of uh, your knowledge to <laughs> uh, to look on uh, on uh, our subject. Uh, this. Uh, first part will be about uh, first determination of radioactive ray energy and uh, this is really possible to say where this is starting it is uh, starting in 1896 uh, in this year uh, Henri Becquerel uh, discovered uh, radioactivity and uh, in this time it was possible to start also measurement and uh, study of this uh, radioactive rays. Yeah, uh, okay. And uh, after that, that means it was start of uh, 20th century. Uh, it is also beginning of this uh, measurement of uh, energy of this uh, rays. And uh, that means that uh, it is a start uh, think point and beginning of this spectroscopy. And uh, in this time, uh, most used uh, were, or it was possible to use only magnetic spectrometers, diffraction spectrometers, and okay, that uh, in this time a physicist obtained first knowledge about nature of this radiation and also some first information of about nuclear structure. Uh, next uh, part, it, it was started after Second World War. It was uh, period in which uh, the scintillation detector starts to be used. And also in this time, it is starting point of usage of electronics. That means first multi-channel multi analyzers. And that means it was a completely different situation. Then, for example, it was uh, known uh, from this uh, beginning of the spectrometry, uh, maybe you know how was uh, made the uh, Rutherford experiment. Okay, fine. Now it will be fine <laughs> question for, for you. Uh, I am asking you, uh, what is Rutherford uh, experiment and what was uh, the importance of this experiment? And what was measured in this experiment and how? Do you know? I don't really know, but I know you discover things about the, um, I don't know in English, uh, about the zone, and uh, but I don't know what he did really. I know that Marie Curie discovered radio radioactivity, and after uh, Gamma, uh, I don't know, no, you can. Me. Ah, okay, that means we will start to discuss. Yeah, uh, do you know what is Rutherford experiment? Uh, I don't know. Ah, okay, F fine. That it is necessary to say. Yeah, <laughs> okay. That the Rutherford experiment was experiment in which, firstly, uh, atom uh, nucleus was possible to see. 
This is an uh, experiment which uh, show uh, this uh, nucleus inside atom. Yeah, uh, you know now what it is. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, that that means uh, this was made uh, by. Uh, Rutherford, Geiger and Marsden and it was done using alpha particles and they obtained alpha particle beam which uh, and they irradiate by this beam uh, foil of aluminum, uh, foil of gold, gold foil and uh, they measured angular distribution of uh, scattered alpha particles. You remember now, which is this experiment? Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. And now my questions. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, sources of this alpha particle, uh, which were used uh, by this uh, uh, by this uh, Rutherford? It's Which the... sources of alpha particle? How he obtained this alpha particle beam? You know? Uh, I don't know what you expect me to say. No. Uh, okay. Uh, in this case, it was obtained uh, this alpha by. Uh, decay of radionuclei, alpha mm. decay. Maybe mm. say me what is alpha decay? It's uh, the disexcitation uh, of uh, radioactive uh, atom. Uh -huh. And uh, what is, uh, which, uh, which radiation is produced? What is emitted particle in this alpha decay? Uh, helium, H. -E. Helium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is helium, which is named also as alpha particle. And mm -hmm. uh, do you know approximately which is kinetic energy of this uh, alpha particle emitted uh, during this uh, uh, this alpha decay? Uh, I know. I don't know. I think. And uh, do you know? Approximately this or, or order, yeah, the order, uh, if um, it is which which uh, unit approximately. It's uh, approximately uh, MEV. I exactly, mean. you are right. It is about unit F of MeV. That means in this case it is uh, something between five MeV, from five MeV up to eight MeV. Yeah, that means. And uh, okay, that means uh, it was uh, alpha particles which were uh, which were uh, energy uh, which is uh, which is uh, non-relativistic. Yeah. Uh, maybe now uh, my question: uh, You know special theory of relativity? You already had lecture, yeah, or not? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, okay. And that means it is uh, no problem for you. And uh, OK, that means this uh, Rutherford experiment showed uh, that uh, you have uh, angular distribution, uh, which is uh, not possible to be for Thomson model of atom. Do you know which was uh, Thomson model of atom? Uh, yes. But uh, I can't remember now. I, I know that I know, but. OK, that's difference between this uh, Thomson model of atom expect that you have a uh, charge sphere with uh, radius with size approximately 0.1 nanometers, 10 to the minus 10 meters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And inside that that was some as pudding, yeah, 
and inside were, uh, were sitting electrons as minus charges. And that means that the size of this sphere was uh, this uh, 0.1 nanometers. And uh, okay, that means also that this was uh, this uh, scattering of uh, this uh, alpha particle was possible to be only due to very small angles. Yeah. Uh, and uh, okay, that and uh, what measured Rutherford and Geiger and Barstan, it was that it is possible to have that the uh, most of particles are running with very small scattering angles. Yeah, but uh, some of them was scattered even to opposite direction. Yeah, it was uh, very unexpected. It was not possible to be for this Thomson model of atom. And that means from this, uh, Rutherford uh, said that, OK, in this case, it's necessary to be small nucleus inside this atom with size approximately uh, one femtometers or something like that, 10 to the minus 15 meters. And uh, OK, that uh, these electrons are running around uh, around this. Uh, and uh, why I am talking about it, uh, do you know uh, how uh, this Marsden and Geiger measured, detected uh, this alpha particle? Mm, I think I know, but... Uh, okay, in this case, uh, this is this difference from <laughs> our times. Uh, in this time, they have a scintigraph. That means a uh, desk which is sensitive uh, on this uh, alpha, uh, alpha particles, but it was possible only to see. That means they were sitting in the darkness and looking on this scintigraph and counting uh, some light express uh, <laughs> uh, in uh, in the on this scintigraph. Yeah, that means uh, it was a problem that in this time, in this uh, time of this Rutherford, that means this this was this beginning of this 20th century. It was not possible to have electronics and uh, to conversion of this signal to electronic signal and to to use computers for uh, for uh, writing and uh, uh, and for uh, online <laughs> analysis of this. And uh, this usage of electronics uh, started already after this uh, Second World War. And in its time, in this uh, third epoch, it was possible to use this scintillation detectors and electronics. And uh, in this time, in this uh, uh, 40s and uh, 50s, uh, we have uh, some beginning of this classical nuclear spectroscopy. Yeah, that means and it was the start of this golden age and uh, because it did in this time by uh, using this uh, multi-channel analyzers to the scintillation detectors uh, with uh, nice sensitivity, uh, it was possible to study uh, nuclear structure, excited states and transition and uh, to start understanding and to start uh, work on the nuclear models. In 60s, it was new change of uh, this level of this spectrometry, and it was given uh, by semiconductor detectors. Yeah, uh, and uh, again in this time, a new development of this electronics and uh, difference between this uh, semiconductor detectors and scintillation detectors was that it was possible uh, to have a much better uh, resolution, energy resolution, and uh, the semiconductor detector has uh, many times even order uh, of uh, this resolution better uh, than this scintillation detectors. And uh, in the 60s uh, and 70s, 
uh, it was a starting point of golden age of classical nuclear spectroscopy. That means it was uh, some hill of this and uh, uh, it was possible to obtain extensive catalogs of excited nuclear states, transition, and it was possible to test theories and uh, it was possible uh, to uh, use advanced uh, uh, applications of this uh, nuclear spectrometry. Now, and uh, last uh, period, which we have already uh, also now, it's, uh, it was started in 80s or 90s uh, of uh, last century and in this century. Uh, in this uh, time, uh, this uh, electronics and also detectors starts to be very, very cheap. That means it was possible for uh, institutes to have many of such detectors and to make a very complicated uh, four pi detector setups. It's pos possible to use this electronics for uh, complicated multi coincidences, uh, even by event measurements, analysis. Uh, and uh, it was possible to use for measurement of very high energies. Uh, and it was also possible to study. Uh, of a very rare and uh, hyperfine uh, events, and uh, it's it was possible to make hyperfine uh, spectrometry. Uh, it was possible to measure giant resonances, super deformed states, high energy nuclear physics, for example, these experiments at CERN, uh, and uh, also on the other side, it was possible. Uh, to use uh, these uh, applications of nuclear spectrometry in medicine, for example, positron emission tomography. Maybe I will ask uh, just now also, uh, do you know what is uh, positron emission tomography? Emission, emission what? What is the last Positron word? emission tomography. Tomography, I don't know, but I know about Positron. Okay, that means we will start with this. <laughs> okay, uh, what is positron? Uh, it's uh, the inverse of mm -hmm. electron. Yeah, um, exactly. It is antiparticle to electron. And uh, okay. Uh, that means if uh, this uh, positron is stopping and they will meet with electron, what we, uh, what you will obtain? Um, it will be, it will zero. Uh, uh, the charge will be. Uh, charge will be zero, that's fine. And uh, okay. Uh, it will be maybe uh, you uh, don't know this uh, word, but uh, it will be annihilate. You will have annihilation. Annihilate, yeah, yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Okay. And what is uh, what is uh, <laughs> product of this annihilation? Uh, I maybe uh, just uh, about the charge. No. Not. What? What is? What is product of annihilation of electron and positron? Because uh, a negative charge uh, is with a positive charge. Yes, of that that will be charge will be zero. Yeah. Uh, but with which particles are produced during this annihilation? Do you know? Uh, no, I don't know, but I know that. No, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this two photons will be produced gamma with energy which is in gamma region. Uh, okay. Do you know what are photons? Yeah. Uh, what are? <laughs> it's uh, not that, uh, not enough for me to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's necessary to explain. No, uh, this is uh, a little joke. But uh, in any case, it will be fine if you if we will together 
discuss. Yeah, that means uh, it will be better for uh, you to, to, to for your uh, education and <laughs> for your uh, knowledge. Uh, okay, what are these photons? It could be gamma ray. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know that uh, this is uh, this is a particle which is connected with electromagnetic waves. And uh, we know that uh, quantum physics uh, uh, make that we have also this electromagnetic waves are quantized and uh, this quantum of this energy is uh, this photon. And uh, during this uh, electron and positron annihilation, uh, two photons are produced. Uh, do you know why it's necessary to have uh, two photons during this annihilation? No, I don't know. Okay, this is from pure kinematic. Okay. Because uh, this annihilation of positron in electron is mostly in the rest. That means you have annihilation of positron and electron in the rest. That means starting point is zero of momentum. Yeah, that means and you have conservation law of momenta. That means on the end you need to have also zero momenta. And if it will be only one photon, yeah, this will be not possible to be because you have only uh, momenta in one direction. That means it's necessary to have two photons and one photon is going in one direction, second photon is running in opposite direction. And uh, momenta and energy of these photons should be same uh, because uh, this magnitude should be same, only direction is opposite of this momenta, uh, because it's necessary to be total momenta, sum of these momenta should be zero. Yeah, it's clear? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Perfect, yeah. And now we will go to this uh, positron emission tomography. Uh, it is method which is used in uh, medicine, and uh, it is used in this way. Uh, you have uh, some, ah, uh, maybe I have a uh, next question. question. Uh, how, uh, how many types of beta radioactivity you have? How mm -hmm. is possible to be this uh, beta radioactivity? Beta, uh, beta plus, beta minus, and electronic capture. Perfect, excellent. Fine. Uh, that means now we are talking about this beta plus because in this uh, beta decay, uh, this uh, positron is produced. Yeah. And uh, if you will have this beta plus uh, radionuclei and you will put, for example, this beta plus radionuclei uh, to glucose and mm -hmm. to patient, this glucose is uh, energy for energy transportation and mostly it will go, for example, for this uh, cancer part uh, and or to special working uh, part of your body. And uh, OK, it will be in this in this part and uh, beta plus decay, this positron will annihilate in this place and two gamma is running from, from this point in opposite direction. That means you know exactly uh, two coordinates and uh, next third coordinates you will obtain from timing because you know that photons are moving. Ah, okay, question. Uh, <laughs> uh, with which velocity uh, photons are moving, which is uh, velocity of photons. It's uh, it's about uh, um, light. Uh... Exactly, it is light velocity. Yeah, that means 
Okay, that means that these both photons has the same velocity, and from time it's possible to obtain how was the stance of this uh, from detector. Yeah, and that means that if you will uh, put around this patient uh, this uh, detectors of gamma. Uh, it's possible by uh, detection of gammas uh, to obtain information in which part of a patient body uh, was this uh, beta plus radionuclides and to obtain information where is cancer, where is, uh, where is some uh, working part of this body and it's possible to scan and to obtain three-dimensional picture of uh, of uh, part of uh, this patient body yeah that means it's uh, excellent for diagnostic uh, medicine uh, diagnostic yeah and this positron emission tomography it's perfect method which is used in uh, in uh, in hospitals and uh, for example also our institute is uh, producing these radionuclides which are used for this yeah by accelerator it is possible to produce but in any case uh, in this case we are working about uh, nuclear spectrometry application and it is really about gamma spectrometry uh, application because we uh, our detectors uh, should uh, detect uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, gamma which are produced by this annihilation that means positron emission tomography uh, okay, that means uh, it was uh, <laughs> parts about which we uh, will talk during this history and we will start with uh, uh, this uh, discovery time in, as I said to you, that in 1896, uh, Beck, Henri Becquerel discovered uh, radioactivity and uh, you already said that we have alpha decay, we have beta decay and we have gamma decay uh, and uh, okay that's uh, discovery was uh, just one year after uh, discovery of uh, x-rays uh, and uh, it was uh, discovered using photographic plate that means uh, it was first uh, detector of this uh, rays uh, was this photographic plate and uh, it was possible also to use this scintillation or fluorescence. Uh, again, I will say you that uh, this Rutherford experiment exactly used this uh, uh, scintillation on scintigraph uh, plate. And uh, okay, and uh, later it was uh, possible to use this uh, gas fired uh, detectors, gas fired ionization chamber uh, for detection of it. In uh, 19 uh, it, uh, zero, zero, uh, it was possible uh, to make identification of this different uh, type of uh, radiation, alpha, beta and gamma uh, by Rutherford and Villard. And uh, this uh, gas filed detectors, which were used by Rutherford and Geiger, uh, it was possible to use also uh, for deter first determination of uh, energy. Yeah to use a full stopping of charged particle and or from particle range or from uh, deposit energy, it was possible to use first estimate of uh, energy. Uh, this uh, proportional counters in principle, it was possible to use also for gamma rays. Uh, for gamma rays, you have problem for this photon because they have not charged, that means it is not possible ionization, yeah. And uh, okay, but it is possible to do uh, one. Ah, okay, maybe I have a question. Which three types of interaction you know for interaction of gamma with matter? It's a uh, Compton, photoelectric, Aha, uh -huh, exactly. Uh, okay, fine. Air effect. Uh, what was this last? Uh, I don't know in English. It's pair. Exactly, perfect. Yeah. Uh, it is photo effect. 
it is Compton scattering yeah. and it is uh, pair production. And in this pair production, it is electron positron pair production. Perfect. That means it's possible to use this photo effect for detection of these gamma rays because you have photo effect, electron is produced, yeah, and okay, electron, it's possible to obtain energy of electron. And because uh, during photo effect, uh, photon will convert all energy uh, to this electron. It's possible by measurement of this uh, electron energy to obtain information about energy of gamma. Yeah, it was first method which were used for uh, obtaining energy of uh, gamma. Uh, okay, later, starting uh, year uh, 1905, uh, it was possible to start first energy determination with better uh, resolution. Yeah, uh, Brack and Kilman uh, measure, measured uh, alpha range at gas, and uh, they see different ranges. Yeah, uh, maybe explain me how it is uh, for beta and alpha decay with energy of this, uh, you have some uh, concrete uh, decay, uh, alpha decay, and uh, you have uh, some concrete uh, one uh, decay of uh, beta. How it is for this uh, alpha energy from alpha decay and how is energy uh, for this beta decay? I, you want the uh, law of uh, conservation? Ah, maybe, uh, maybe I will say uh, say also uh, in our way. Uh, in which case you will obtain one discrete energy and in which you will obtain continuous spectrum. And why? Uh, I don't know if I really understand. Uh... I know that energy is uh, we can uh, we have um, an equality a law uh, which uh, energy conservation before and after with uh, mass energy kinetic energy and uh, 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 fine maybe yeah. uh, I will ask in in this way uh, how many particles you will obtain after alpha decay how many objects or uh, at the moment of alpha decay we have uh, an alpha mm -hmm. and when um, when the uh, sun uh, at atom uh, will disexcite himself they will ah, okay, fine. Uh, that uh, if you will, uh, will have excited state, you will have gamma decay and these things. But during alpha decay, you will, will have alpha and nucleus. That means two objects. Yeah. Uh, how many objects you will obtain during beta decay? Two. Ah, in beta or alpha? Beta or alpha decay? No, during beta decay, how uh, many particles or objects you will obtain? Three. Three. And which will be? Uh, mm, sun uh, atom. Mm -hmm. Atom. Uh, beta. And Electron uh, or positron. Ne and? No. Neutrinon. Exactly. That's yeah. perfect. And uh, because you have uh, three particles, this momenta and energy will be spread to three particles. That means yeah. in this case, electron will be will have continuous spectrum because sometimes uh, it will obtain more energy and smaller energy will go to neutrino and uh, opposite. Yeah? yeah, during alpha decay, 
you will obtain discrete spectra. Yeah, that means this is uh, this was uh, in this time it was not uh, known. Yeah, uh, even uh, in this time it was expected that this beta decay is also only two particle decays, and it was uh, very uh, very interesting discovery and very big discussion why it is not uh, discrete spectrum and continuous spectrum of electrons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that means. Uh, it was a very big problem to measure this uh, beta energy and uh, it was measured by beta absorption. Uh, this is also necessary to say that it is very big difference uh, uh, between interaction of light particles as is electron and heavy particles and uh, they obtained that it is uh, not uh, exponential uh, change and uh, and uh, there is not only one energy. Yeah, that means uh, it was uh, uh, necessary uh, to measure this energy in other way, and they used the magnetic field as a uh, photographic plate, and this movement of uh, charged particle in magnetic field. Uh, from this radius of this mo movement, it was possible to obtain uh, this uh, momenta, and that means also uh, energy. And they uh, they obtained this was in uh, first magnetic spectrometers in this uh, in this time, and uh, on the base of this uh, magnetic spectrometer, it was possible to see that the spectrum is complicated, and they they have uh, not only uh, discrete spectra, but also continuous spectra of uh, electrons. Uh, maybe do you know why is uh, in this beta decay uh, possible, uh, mostly, very oftenly, is possible to see also some discrete values of uh, energy of electrons? Do you know? I think I don't know, but I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Uh, if you have uh, gamma decay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, there are two possibilities. How is possible to uh, to emit by nucleus energy from excited states? One emission of gamma and second do you know which is second possibility no this is a conversion electron do you know what a conversion electron mm, not, i'm not sure no mm -hmm. okay in this way in this case uh, this is situation in which because you have quantum physics yeah, and for uh, you have electromagnetic field around this nucleus. Yeah, and during this field, it's possible to send energy to electron, which is in this atomic shell, and this yeah. electron is running away. Ah. It means uh, it is possible to put energy throws this electromagnetic field yeah. electron and electron is running away and this is uh, named as conversion electron yeah it's a uh, x uh, it's x particle no uh, electron is running away yeah 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 and uh, because uh, uh, this energy of this, this electron is uh, energy of gamma minus this binding energy of this electron that means it is one discrete level of this uh, of this energy uh, okay uh, in uh, 14 1914 James Chadwick uh, obtained information and definitely confirmed uh, that uh, this uh, beta spectrum is also continuous not only this discrete which is given by this conversion electron and uh, it was also uh, confirmed by colorimetric measurements by Ellis and Wooster and uh, uh, from 1911 
it was possible for measurement and also for obtaining uh, energy of a particle to use the Wilson cloud chamber. Yeah. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, it was uh, possible to obtain a comparison of uh, energy uh, from trace length, for example, for different uh, alpha particle. Yeah. You will have uh, different radionuclei which produced alpha particle and you will look on uh, length of these traces and if uh, length will be longer, it's clear that this energy is higher and it's possible uh, to make a comparison, relative comparison of energies of this particle. That means it is all, also one of the starting method of uh, measurement of uh, energy of particle. Uh, real uh, beginning of uh, spectrometry, uh, it is in times 1912-1915 uh, and uh, one uh, very important method uh, was uh, based on Bragg diffraction on crystal uh, planes uh, which, was, uh, which was started by Max von Lau and uh, uh, Bragg's. And uh, okay, that uh, started uh, possibility to measure very accurately energy of gamma. Uh, first, uh, this crystal uh, diffraction spectroscope, spectroscopes or spectrometers uh, were, uh, uh, were uh, constructed uh, in uh, 19. Uh, 14, 1915, and uh, okay, and uh, they uh, made uh, very big, uh, big tools, very big spectrometers, uh, where distances were many meters, yeah, because you need to have a very big uh, distance uh, for uh, for this diffraction, because these angles, diffraction angles, are uh, for. Uh, energy of uh, this gamma, which is necessary to measure, were very, uh, very small. Uh, that means, uh, but it is necessary to say that also in uh, in uh, common times, uh, this uh, diffraction and diffraction spectrometers are the uh, are, uh, spectrometers with the best resolution, energy resolution, that this, for example, very accurate measurements of different gamma lines are based on this uh, crystal uh, diffractometers. Uh, okay, that's uh, also, uh, as I said, uh, just a few sentences before, uh, electron and alpha movement uh, in magnetic field, it's possible to use, and we have this uh, magnetic spectrometer. And uh, also in this time, it was uh, firstly possible to use uh, this uh, beta spectrographs first for using beta spectrographs. As I said, this gamma energy is possible to measure by crystal diffraction method and uh, this uh, alpha energy measurement by this uh, magnetic uh, spectrometers was possible to do uh, with accuracy, which is near to uh, one uh, percent. I said to you that uh, during this uh, 40s, it's, well, it will be possible, it was possible uh, to start uh, real uh, spectrometry with usage uh, scintillator detectors and uh, electronics. And uh, it was uh, based on the development of uh, Hofstadter. Uh, which uh, start to use uh, natrium iodide scintillation uh, detectors. He, here is this uh, uh, this uh, article, first article in 1949, where uh, was first information about uh, possibility to use uh, such uh, detectors. Uh, maybe for you it is uh, very fine and very interesting sometimes to look now all these articles, all these journals are on the internet and it is possible uh, to look on it and it is uh, possible, it was digitized and uh, it's possible to look on these old uh, articles and they are, uh, they are very interesting and uh, they are nice, uh, nice uh, 
nice information also for uh, for us. Uh, this scintillation detector uh, was uh, zonized also from this reason because uh, before uh, this 1948 uh, uh, it was invented also a photomultiplier and uh, invention of photomultiplier was important because it was possible to uh, convert this uh, light uh, information to electronic information and it was possible to work uh, with uh, with this and to obtain uh, electronic spectra. Uh, also in 30s it, uh, it was starting point of new spectrometry, spectrometry of new particles because in 1930 uh, neutrons were discovered by Berta and Becker and uh, Chadwick uh, obtain information that uh, this uh, neutrons are neutral particle with mass which is near, near to proton and uh, it was uh, possible to detect these neutrons by interaction uh, with protons and uh, to obtain uh, interaction uh, and to obtain energy uh, with the help of refracted uh, proton. Uh, okay, maybe I have one uh, also question to you. Uh, do you know what are elastic scattering, inelastic scattering and coherent scattering? Do you know what are differences between do these three types of scatterings? Yeah, it depends on the um, energy um, Re, uh, energy of the reaction. If it's 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 uh, if Q, it's um, equal to zero, or if it's not, it's elastic or inelastic. I don't know if you know what I mean. Uh, okay, I, I don't know exactly, but uh, maybe we will make together. Yeah. yeah. If you have uh, elastic elastic scattering, how it is with uh, with uh, kinetic energy uh, of uh, this system? Uh, I don't know about the kinetic energy. I know about the energy of the reaction. If it's ah, okay, uh, fine. Yeah. It's possible to go uh, from this <laughs> side okay. of view. Uh, okay, how it is, uh, which is reaction energy for elastic scattering and which is for inelastic scattering. For elastic scattering, it will be zero. zero. Exactly, you are right. Uh, because uh, I don't, I don't know why I know that. Uh, this is uh, this is because it is uh, not excitation of this target, which is in this scattering. That means in this case. From point of view of uh, kinetic energy, this is this will be not change of kinetic energy to rest energy. Yeah, that means you have for elastic scattering, you have also conservation of kinetic energy, not only conservation of energy, which is for any process, but you have conservation of kinetic energy. Uh, because it is no transformation of this kinetic energy for excitation of target and all the things. Yeah, that means uh, this is zero energy of reaction and okay, that this is elastic. And do you know what is coherent scattering? This is uh, really important for this uh, diffraction. Yeah, we will discuss this later, but uh, okay. Uh, do you know what is coherent scattering? I don't know. Uh, in this case, it's necessary to be that all in this case, this projectile kinetic energy 
will be not changed, will be not transferred on target. That means <coughs> uh, in this case also uh, this kinetic energy of projectile is not changed and also momenta, magnitude of momenta is not changed, only direction of momenta is changed. That means uh, it is not changed also uh, wavelength of this. That means phase is also not changed. That means it is possible to have interference. Yeah? And it is possible only in this case in which this atom on which the scattering is uh, going is fixed in crystal yeah? and it is not moved and in this case, it is very, very heavy system yeah, because this is whole crystal, not only one uh, atom. And uh, in this case, uh, you will obtain uh, this coherent scattering in which uh, this uh, momenta, magnitude of momenta and kinetic energy of this uh, photon is not, uh, will be not changed. Yeah. OK. Now, do you know? What okay. are these What's three the, types of scatterings? What is the name of the third one? Uh, coherent. Coherent. Okay. Thank you. And uh, starting from C, yeah? Ex uh, pronunciation is coherent, but uh, it is coherent. <laughs> okay. C and, uh, okay. Uh, fine. That means uh, I, I, I said uh, it, if you uh, want to use this diffraction spectrometry, it is necessary to have coherent scattering or on this crystal planes. Uh, okay, fine. That means uh, this uh, usage of uh, natrium iodized scintillation detectors uh, it was a uh, very big breakthrough uh, for uh, nuclear spectrometry and uh, it was uh, some point which started uh, already this, uh, uh, this development of gold times of spectrometry. And uh, this, in this time, this uh, already started this broad development of classical spectroscopy and spectrometry method. Uh, for detection of this gamma, the scintillation detectors were used and for uh, that uh, for measurement and also uh, determination of energy and for uh, determination of energy for example electrons this magnetic spectrometers were used uh, it uh, here it is some uh, nice photography from one uh, article which is from journal and uh, article from this time in in 40s and 50s and uh, that in this case, uh, many times, this magnetic spectrometry really it was a photograph of uh, the spectrum. And here is possible to see continuous spectrum and also this conversion electron uh, electron lines. Yeah, that, that means this is some examples uh, of this conversion electron spectroscopy, which was made by magnetic spectrometers. Yeah, uh, OK. Uh, magnetic spectrometers for electrons and measurement of uh, energy of spectrometers and gamma uh, by uh, scintillation uh, detectors. Sometimes it was uh, with uh, higher accuracy, it was possible to measure, measure these gamma transitions uh, by this method about which I was talking just uh, a few sentences uh, before that uh, we have photo effect and we will again measure uh, by magnetic spectrometers this uh, energy of uh, electron and uh, on the base of this uh, energy of electron uh, it's possible to obtain information also about photons. Uh, okay, uh, problem is that uh, uh, in this time uh, it was also possible uh, to, uh, to use uh, uh, electrostatic spectrometers uh, but the uh, disadvantage was that uh, it, uh, in this uh, case uh, you have single channel and uh, also 
uh, it was uh, it was difficult to to measure accurately uh, this energy. Uh, it is again also in these times it was possible to use this uh, diffraction spectrometers and uh, this uh, resolution uh, of this uh, it was possible to obtain this uh, uh, lower and or near to one electron volts uh, even uh, even better. Uh, that means it was possible to study uh, nuclear structure excited states transitions. Uh, next uh, breakthrough, it was in 60s and uh, it is connected uh, in this gamma spectrometry uh, with starting point of usage of semiconductor detectors. Yeah? And, and again, uh, it was nice and uh, uh, very intensive development of uh, electronics. Yeah? Uh, and uh, which is uh, advantage of this uh, semiconductor detectors uh, uh, and uh, for gamma detection uh, they already started to, to use this uh, germanium uh, detectors with uh, lithium. Uh, in this case uh, we have much better resolution and uh, uh, full width in half maximum in this case was uh, only 5 kV and it start to be better and better later and uh, now for uh, this energy is near to uh, 2 uh, mega electron volts it, it is uh, 2 kV. Uh, and uh, why is possible to have uh, so uh, nice uh, resolution? Uh, for this uh, semiconductor detectors. It is uh, based on it that uh, this uh, production of electron hole pair is only about three electron volts necessary. Yeah, that means very small energy and all energy is transferred to this uh, electron hole uh, production. Uh, this uh, semiconductor detectors made possible uh, complex, very complex measurement uh, and uh, it starts also in this time this application for medicine and uh, material research and not only for basic research studies of nuclear structure reaction mechanism but also uh, for uh, application. And uh, okay, in uh, 70, 1970, they started to work with high purity germanium, not only uh, this germanium put by uh, lithium, but uh, with high purity uh, germanium. And uh, a very big advantage uh, of this uh, high purity germanium is that uh, in this uh, case, it is not uh, necessary uh, to have, uh, because uh, for this germanium detectors you need to have a uh, temperature uh, which is for uh, liquid nitrogen. It's necessary to have very, uh, very low, uh, low temperature. And uh, for high purity germanium, germanium for a working detector, it's necessary to have this uh, temperature of liquid nitrogen, but it is not necessary to be uh, for a detector which is not on the high voltage, which is not uh, used for measurement. That means uh, it is also possible to use for some factory in which uh, I will use this for some application and uh, I will make uh, one week some measurement. After that, I will end measurement and now for two months uh, it's not necessary for me to have this uh, semiconductor detector to work. Uh, and uh, I will uh, put away this uh, liquid nitrogen. It is ne not necessary to have it and uh, to wait and after that to start this measurement. For this germanium, it was necessary also in the time in which uh, this measurement was not, it was necessary to have this uh, uh, liquid nitrogen and it was uh, problematic for uh, factories and for laboratories in which uh, it was uh, not this uh, uh, this uh, usage of this liquid nitrogen normally. Uh, okay, in 1983, USA uh, abandoned uh, 
commercial production of this germanium, uh, old germanium detector stopped by lithium. Uh, in 1971, uh, firstly, Conin uh, used anti-Compton uh, spectrometer. Yeah. Uh, you know that uh, uh, this uh, second or one of this interaction of gamma fifth matter is Compton scattering. Uh, during Compton scattering, this gamma will give uh, to electron not all energy, only part of this energy. That means it will be not go to uh, photopeak, but it is going to Compton continuum, yeah? And uh, Conin uh, make possible suppression of this Compton background and up to one order. That means it's uh, very, very big. And how it was done? It was done that uh, he used uh, this germanium detectors and around uh, this germanium detectors, he placed uh, scintillation detector, for example, this natrium iodide crystal. And difference between uh, semiconductor detector and uh, scintillation detector is that semiconductor detector has very nice energy resolution, but efficiency is smaller. On opposite side, the scintillation detector has worse energy resolution, but it has very big, very high efficiency. Yeah, that means if you have germanium detectors and gamma is going to germanium detectors and if will be Compton scattering and gamma is uh, running away from this semiconductor detectors and they will go to scintillation detectors so will be very big efficiency of detection of this uh, gamma in this uh, scintillation detectors and if you have uh, if you will put anti-coincidences between this germanium and scintillator detectors, these anti-coincidences will suppress all events in which will be Compton scattering and after that detection in this scintillation detector. Yeah, and okay, this all this type of detectors and mainly this semiconductor detectors. They uh, start already started this golden age of classical spectrometry and uh, completion of this era uh, age of golden uh, classical spectrometry and also this development of uh, applications. Uh, I said to you that uh, in 80s and uh, 90s uh, it was possible to use uh, complex setups because uh, these detectors and also electronics uh, already started to be uh, very cheap or cheaper, and it was it will it was not possible uh, it was not uh, complicated and it was possible uh, to buy for uh, laboratories uh, many of these uh, detectors and um, electronics. And uh, in this uh, time also, they already started to study uh, very raw effects and very complicated uh, the excitation of very excited states in nuclei. And uh, they started to use these very complex setups of scintillation detectors or uh, these uh, semiconductor detectors and uh, such structures were named as, for example, crystal sphere, because it was a sphere and uh, it was uh, made uh, to obtain 4 pi uh, acceptance. Uh, for medical applications, they started uh, already to use this positron emission uh, tomography chambers. Yeah, positron emission tomography, we already discussed this. 
And uh, okay, that uh, was possible to use many of uh, these uh, anti-Compton uh, spectrometers. That means combination of this semiconductor and scintillation detectors. And here it's possible to see such uh, such setups of detectors. And what is uh, here? This is this uh, you are uh, for. Uh, you are for uh, this liquid nitrogen for cooling of this uh, high purity germanium uh, detectors. Yeah, for uh, detection of and uh, identification of uh, charged particle, it was possible to use plastic scintillator, uh, some sandwiches, and uh, it was possible to identify of different charged particles. Uh, such setups were, were named as a North Ball, Crystal Ball, Plastic Ball, yeah, and combination of many detectors were used. Uh, how we see now, for example, at this uh, CERN experiment, uh, it was possible to use complex electronic systems, superconductive magnets, and even by event uh, detection. And uh, uh, we will discuss also some example of such uh, experiments, for example, these plastic balls. And it was possible also to, to use new types of these scintillation detectors, not only this natrium iodide, but all, also uh, this uh, lead uh, tungsten materials uh, or BGO. Uh, or barium fluorides or another, we will already discuss this uh, later. And what is possible uh, by this uh, very nice uh, technical setups and uh, very nice spectrometers, it was possible to study phenomena with very small probabilities, high multiplicities, complex coincidences, uh, cascades of the excitation and uh, high energies. Nuclear structure, for example, is super deformed states, giant resonances, and uh, it was possible to obtain very accurate uh, values of uh, energies. For example, uh, this uh, for searching very uh, very accurate measurement of energy of electron uh, for searching of neutrino mass. Yeah, this experiments what. For example, my colleagues are now working on the Katrin experiment, which is experiment for measurement of uh, neutrino uh, masses. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, come on. Uh, I, I, I think that we will end this, and uh, next lecture we will already start uh, with real <laughs> lecturing of uh, spectrometry, and we will start with this gamma spectrometry and uh, with, uh, with this three type of, uh, of interaction and uh, all these things. Uh, thank you very much.